Hello, and welcome to Christianity with Kyle, where the Holy Spirit guides us into God's promises. Basically, the radar scans show the same thing that the metal detector scans did, only with more detail. They show there is a pattern. In today's video, we're going to watch part two of the Ron Wyatt Noah's Ark Discovery. This is going to be a three-part series, and you want to catch all three parts, because in the third part, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to talk about something that's fascinating that I've never heard anyone talk about when it comes to the creation account and how the creation account is quite opposite of the evolutionary model, okay? And so you want to stick around for that, but today's video is going to be even more enlightening as to the information regarding this being Noah's Ark. So buckle up, because it's going to be a really fun ride. Let's go. Get used to different. Here are the first definite positive signs that the object is not just a natural phenomenon, but indeed may be man-made. Dr. Baumgartner, and Ron scanned the entire site with three different types of metal detectors. Placing rocks at each metal reading, they then attached tapes to show the lines. This exciting evidence also attracted the interest of ABC's 2020. That's a strong reading. Hmm. Well, I'd say that, that, uh, those frames right there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> keep walking. Do you want Do you want a measuring tape to measure these things how far apart they are? He found distinct metal lines down the entire length of the object, while no metal readings were obtained just outside of it. And the results with all three different types of metal detectors were consistent, and they did indeed give a pattern as they laid out strips, uh, uh, which, which show you some of the patterns that they got. Now they also got crosswise patterns, and in a lengthwise patterning, and this was first discovered with the metal detector. As a scientist, uh, uh, might I take the liberty here to ask you, uh, do you really honestly believe uh, that you have been on the remains of Noah's Ark? I have no, no doubt in my mind. There's, uh, this has to be a man-made structure. It's full of metal. The metal is, uh, has a regular pattern to it. And uh, uh, the size of the thing the shape of the thing is uh, such that it's it's almost certainly a, a large boat. The finished shape outlined by the ribbons was that of a huge ship, the approximate length and width of Noah's Ark as described in the Bible. With the width and the length known, the only remaining question was depth. By locating the depth of the hull, they could determine if the boat-shaped object had the cargo capacity described in the biblical ark. To resolve this final issue, Wyatt and Fassel brought geologist Tom Finner to Turkey with his company's heavy-duty subsurface radar equipment. Subsurface interface radar is a new high-technology tool which allows examination of objects underground without preliminary digging or excavation. The principle is simple enough. Electromagnetic pulses, or short wavelength electric energy bursts, are transmitted into the ground. Echoes from these pulses bounce back and are measured by a receiver. The echo time can be translated into readings which are graphically recorded on a continuous roll of paper, such as an electrocardiogram printout. Thus, objects beneath the surface of the ground level may be located and, to some degree, measured. There's the longitudinal bulkheads. You ought to see them popping out, man. Yeah, there they are. There's yeah. another one. There's the key line right there. Yeah. All right, the lines are there! 
<laughs> the lines are there. This is the west bulkhead. All right. That was over there. And he walked easterly. Here we start getting the longitudinal bulkheads. Here, 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 here. here okay. Here. You see there how it shows up? All right. The initial scans were very impressive, showing internal structure consistent with bulkheads and rooms. But to be sure they were interpreting the data correctly, Ron took the scan printouts to Geophysical Survey Systems, the developer and manufacturer of the radar. This data is not, it does not represent natural geology. It's, it's a man-made structure. These reflections are occurring very per periodic, too periodic to be random na natural type interface. Basically, the radar scans show the same thing that the metal detector scans did, only with more detail. They show there is a pattern. They show there's a pattern of linear lines, there's a pattern of cross lines, and there's a pattern of uh, even distribution to these lines in both directions. Now that's precisely what you would expect out of the remains of a ship type object. Because you would have a keel, you would have parallel lines which would be keelsons, and you would have the transverse uh, lines which would be bulkheads and other reinforcing of the ship. He finds three massive anchor-type stones, all approximately eight feet high and weighing several tons each. All are similar in proportion and design and have eight distinct crosses, which are carved in the stone in a pattern which Ron and other experts believe refer to the eight survivors of the flood. The placing and alignment on the stones tell of their relationship to Noah and one another. This is called an iconographic representation. The difference that becomes obvious immediately is the difference in size. These giant pierced stones are similar to ancient anchor stones used in the Mediterranean for centuries and millennia. They qualify quite readily as fitting the picture of stone anchors as Ron originally identified them. Only in size or scale do these stones differ significantly from their considerably smaller Mediterranean counterparts. If the size of the stone anchors implies the size of the boat or ship on which they were used, how much more should it be true for these stone anchors weighing several tons to be, by this standard, arc-size stone anchors? I've seen three of those stones in the field. One is in a village and two are out in the fields by the village. The first point that one can make in comparing with anchor stones, and we have many, many anchor stones to compare with. Anchor stones were the common way to anchor ships until iron came in about 1200 BC. Anchor stones are tall in one dimension. They are thin in another direction, and they have a hole at the top. Now, the other aspect of these stones is their iconography. Somebody has carved some signs into them, as you can see from this, this one right here. The large cross in the center would be Noah. The medium-sized cross to the right and below would represent Noah's wife. Three of the crosses up one side, above the arm of the cross, the major cross, would represent Noah's sons. The other three crosses up the other side would represent the wives of Noah's sons. There's exactly eight crosses. There are eight people in the flood story, and these are engraved upon stones that look very much like anchor type of stones. Wow, the Bible, governments, military leaders, and archaeologists all agree beyond a shadow of a doubt, Ron Wyatt has certainly discovered Noah's Ark. So in the next video, we're going to play the rest of this video, and then I'm going to chime in, and we're going to highlight something that almost nobody talks about, but it absolutely destroys the evolutionary-based understanding that's taught in our public schools and sadly widely received as truth. So that's all I've got for today. May God's richest and best be forever yours. Thank you for watching this video. I have another channel where I exclusively focus on financial ministry to help equip every single one of us for the digital future 
future that is coming. And when you're equipped for that, you will advance the kingdom like never before. So go check out that channel. Your link is in the description below. Subscribe and that way you're equipped for the digital future. Have a blessed day.